Episode 1 of Supercell begins with a female patient trying to escape an armed facility. She blasts the door open but the guards kill her. The other captives watch horrified while a man drinks tea calmly. One of the captives, Jasmine Johnson, begs for a phone call but no one pays her attention. We then cut to South London where we see our protagonists. Mike is a delivery boy who's in a loving relationship with Dion. Money is tight after buying a house but he gives her a convertible and is planning to propose. Andre works at a call centre and is barely able to scrap enough money to pay for child support. But he does everything he can for his son AJ, like buying him a new iPhone which doesn't win him any favours with his ex Aisha. However, he is kicked out of his company due to failing a DBS check. Next we have Taser, who is the new leader of a gang after the previous one, Crazy, got put in prison. But this has a rival gang, Sixers, led by Chucky, picking a fight with Taser and stabbing him. Mike's latest delivery takes him to Charlene's house, where we see our next hero, her sister, Sabrina. She is a nurse who doesn't let racism stop her from doing her job. She is kind and all the patients like her. We then cut to Taser's friends showing up to check on him. He is still sulking and vows not to party until Chucky and his crew are off the board. In another hospital room, we see that Mike's mother, Tina, has sickle cell disease. Victoria from Health and Unity stops by and claims they have the perfect facility to treat her. Next, another protagonist shows up, Rod who is a rookie dealer, trying to sell weed to our guys, but they barely pay him any attention. He works with his friend Spud, but they don't have much luck. We're yet to know what Dion does, but she is busy looking for Jasmine, the girl being held captive, who has been missing for a while now. Similarly, Taser is furious at his mum for abandoning him, but we see that she is a captive who the guards killed. Things aren't going too great for Taser as Chucky drops a diss track. At the same time, Taser's crew tries to bully Mike into paying a turf fee as he drops by for a delivery, but he refuses. Things get violent as they don't let him leave and Taser stabs him. Mike's eyes turn gold and he rewinds to a couple of minutes ago. He thinks it's deja vu as he relives Taser's crew approaching him, but he is much more polite and is led off with a warning. Elsewhere, Rod needs to get somewhere for a big sale, but his car doesn't work. The bus leaves without him and as he runs to catch it, he ends up in Edinburgh in seconds as his eyes glow. On to Sabrina's power reveal, she is super excited for a date with her boyfriend, Kevin, who stands her up. Charlene makes her check his place out and they find him with a new girl. Upset, Sabrina tries to walk off which has Kevin grabbing her. Her eyes glow as she telepathically pushes Kevin away. Next is Andre, who has no money to feed AJ. Turns out the company never paid him before letting him go. Unbelievable. His eyes glow as he angrily punches the ATM machine. It breaks and money pours out which a CCTV camera records. Meanwhile, Mike is disorientated the whole night due to the deja vu incident, but Dion comforts him and makes him laugh. He goes ahead with the proposal, thanking her for being there for him. She is overjoyed and they celebrate by hooking up. However, Mike's eyes suddenly glow and he disappears. He ends up in the future, where Rod, Sabrina, Andre Taser and future Mike are fighting some hooded figures. Future Mike notices him and pauses time. He takes present Mike to a graveyard and tells him it all happened three months after the proposal. And only present Mike can fix things. And as they stop in front of Dion's grave, we see that she died on the 9th of July, 2024. And that is where episode one of Supercell comes to an end. Episode two of Supercell begins with Dion shocked and scared when Mike returns. He frantically writes down everyone's name and Dion's death anniversary too. Finally, he tells her everything apart from her death. In a flashback, we see future Mike telling present Mike that the hooded guys killed Dion. Present Mike needs to stop the hooded guys and also unite the other four superheroes if he wants Dion to live. At present, Mike is worried and tells his friend Gabriel who doesn't believe him. Mike tries to prove himself but he cannot teleport or stop time. Next, we have Andre stealing the money from the ATM and getting ecstatic. He takes his son AJ on a shopping trip but is disappointed when the kid befriends some shady guys. As for Rod, he tries to run back home but he is stuck in Edinburgh. He spots a stoner and is able to make just enough money to buy a train ticket back to London. Back home, he tries to prove himself as well to Spud but he also fails. Alone, he spots a cop giving him a parking ticket. Rod tries to stop him but ends up in another part of the city. Meanwhile, cops are called at Kevin's and Charlene drags Sabrina away who is worried. At home, even Sabrina has a tough time convincing her sister about her superpowers. On to the turf war now, Chucky keeps provoking Taser and his gang, the Tower Boys. They are lured to a vacant lot and ambushed. Taser is cut off and cornered. However, 
As his eyes glow, he turns invisible and kills everyone, including Chucky. The armed facility watches him from the CCTV. Elsewhere, there is trouble in paradise as Dion insists on going to the cops regarding the hooded men, but Mike refuses. While he is showering, he hears about Taser's gang war on the radio, and he teleports for a second. Wanting to help, Dion takes Mike to the park to get some fresh air. She wonders why he is hellbent on finding future Mike's group, but he doesn't tell her. Taser finally tells his friends who are pleasantly surprised by his powers. We are told that he got his powers a week ago and he can finally control it. He dreams big and decides to get into drugs as Crazy and Chucky's turfs are ripe for the taking. While the Tower Boys set up the deal, Mike shows, requesting an audience with Taser. To make him leave, Twozy takes his number. However, the Sixers show up and shoot Mike, thinking he is a Tower Boy. Well. It can't end here, can it? Mike accidentally pauses time, grabs a bullet and teleports home. Dion is worried and warns him to stay away from Taser. Mike promises, but after she leaves, he texts Twozy to set up a meeting. At that moment, the Tower Boys pretend to do a botched drug deal. Just before the annoyed dealer drives off, an invisible Taser steals the cocaine. Tiny is upset as the contact is his cousin and he may get in trouble, but Taser assures him that he will protect everyone. And at the end of episode two, Crazy shows up with the drug dealer and his gang and asks if Taser is robbing him. Episode three of Supercell begins with Taser making a deal with Crazy, a one-on-one -on -one fight with Masha, the dealer accusing him of stealing the cocaine. Crazy agrees and despite Taser not being able to turn invisible, he beats the dealer. As the Tower Boys celebrate, Crazy shoots Tiny, since he's the one who set up the deal. Meanwhile, Michael experiments with his teleportation, but he is not able to change time. As for Dion, we see that she is a social worker as she heads out to Taser's to talk to his grandmother about Kemi and Mosan. Yep, Kemi is Taser's mother and the woman who was killed at the start of the show. A worried Mrs. Amusan reveals that Kemi was doing inhuman things and wanted to get better, which is why she left. Kemi would contact her every week, but now has been MIA for the past two weeks. Elsewhere, Sabrina gets an MRI scan and is surprised that everything is fine with her. However, she is still stunned by her powers, which leads to almost killing a patient. Scared, she runs out and almost walks into traffic, but Andre saves her. But that's their only interaction for the moment. It turns out Andre and AJ are out having fun. Talks turns to Andre's dad, who had sickle cell disease while he doesn't. Coincidence? As they head to Aisha's, AJ sees his friends, Crazy's gang. Once he heads inside, Andre tries to request Braggs, the second dealer, to stay away from AJ. The gang mocks him and he walks away with his eyes glowing. He's not the only one they have angered. The Tower Boys plan on killing Crazy as Taser feels guilt over Tiny's injury. Michael shows up at the worst time possible and even teleports to prove himself, but an angry Taser isn't interested in talking to him. This has Michael stressed who also needs to book his mum at the Health and Unity Centre for a sickle cell treatment. Next, he sets his eyes on Rodney as we see him ranting to Gabriel about how he foolishly ignored Rod when the boy tried to sell him weed. Michael heads to the place where he last saw Rod and waits all day, asking around to no avail. But as luck would have it, someone finally tells Michael to text Spud if he wants weed. Meanwhile, Rod is busy showing off his powers to Spud. He even hits his head but immediately heals. He ends up gathering a large clientele as he boasts that he will give his stuff away for free if he can't make the delivery within five minutes. Spud warns him about the government catching him and doing experiments, but he doesn't really listen. Turns out, Spud is right, as we see the secret facility watching Rod via CCTVs and planning to catch him. As for Sabrina, she is still shaken up. Her problems don't end there though, as Charlene's abusive ex drops by, crazy. Guess all the superheroes are somehow connected to each other after all. Crazy showers Charlene with praises and gifts, and she gives him much to Sabrina's chagrin. They plan to meet at Gabriel's club, Onyx, and Sabrina tags along to keep an eye on Crazy. Meanwhile, Andre finally shows his powers to his former co-worker, John, by picking up his car. Elsewhere, Dion tries to tell Mike about Kemi and how she has found internet posts about people with glowing eyes and superpowers. Mike worries that she will find out about her death and tries to deter her from looking into the whole thing. But he does it the wrong way as he snaps at her and heads out to meet Rod. He arrives just in time as a hooded man attacks Rod with a fireball. They teleport to Onyx and Rod is shot. Well, you can guess who else is at Onyx. Sabrina is still out of it as she feels dizzy in the club's bathroom. Meanwhile, Charlene hits it off with a guy called Kadeem after Crazy stands her up. Charlene and Kadeem make it outside, but when she tries to go inside, he gets violent. 
His eyes glow and he levitates, but Sabrina throws him against the wall, which instantly kills him. A tracker in his arm glows and the facility is alerted that he is dead. And at the end of episode three, the CCTV footage shows him last with Charlene. Episode four of Supercell begins with Charlene and Sabrina running off. Sabrina wants to turn herself in, even when Charlene reminds her that it was just self-defense. While Charlene is asleep, Sabrina writes her a goodbye letter and heads to the station. However, she runs off when she realizes that the cops don't know about the murder. She heads to the crime scene and sees that the body is gone. She rushes home and takes back the letter. On to the man of the hour, or well, episode, Andre is getting ready for his big interview. AJ helps him and they even make plans to watch a movie after. However, some debt collector shows up and starts creating a scene. Andre is upset when AJ volunteers his new iPhone and clothes to clear some of the debt. Andre stops him and pays off his debt by handing in all the cash he stole from the broken ATM. Meanwhile, Dion tries to talk to Jasmine's mother who refuses to share anything. We then cut to Jasmine and the other captives being drugged as the doctors take their blood. Later, Dion's co-worker Terry shares that Jasmine has called and calls every week at the same time without fail. Dion catches on to this as well as she compares Jasmine and Kemi's missing person files. Elsewhere, Michael tries his hand with Rodney once more after he runs away from Onyx. Spud tags along and is excited about the idea of an Avengers team up, but Rod is not interested in helping Michael. One reason is that his powers have disappeared. Back to Andre, he shows up at his big interview and decides to be honest. The reason he can't keep a job for long is that he hides his criminal records and once the company does a background check they let him go and the only reason he has one was because he tried to give a lift to a friend when he was 18. Cops pulled them over and arrested Andre on finding the friend's drugs in his car. He hopes his honesty will win him points especially since the boss is a black man but no such luck. A disappointed Andre heads to Onyx to meet with John who tells him to rob a trap house as revenge against drug dealers. While a worried Andre thinks it over, in the next booth, Michael rants to Gabriel about not being able to find any of the other superheroes. Gabriel jokes about going through the delivery database, but this gives Michael an idea as he goes over all the parcel recipients. He doesn't have much luck, followed by a call from Dion, who is upset with him over their argument. Meanwhile, Crazy tries to recruit Taser as his younger brother, but the latter sees through his plans. He calls out Crazy for making him do his dirty work and declares that he will kill him the next time they see each other. More connections are popping up as Andre stands up AJ who decides to take a lift from Braggs, Crazy's dealer. He entices AJ into accompanying him to a deal to earn some extra money. Of course, Andre stood up his son to stake out the trap house, which you guessed it, belongs to Crazy. As for Charlene, she finds Sabrina's letter to give herself up and picks a fight with her. At that moment, Mike shows with a package. He recognizes Sabrina and tries to tell her about the future, but she is busy fighting with her sister, who acts petty by heading to crazies. Sabrina begrudgingly tags along and so does Michael. He suddenly gets a call from his mother who is in pain and he explains that he needs to leave as she has sickle cell disease. He teleports before the girls can reveal that their father also has sickle cell disease. And guess who else shows up at crazies? Yep, it's Spud. It turns out Rod has been selling on Crazy's turf and he is not happy about it. He sets up bait by ordering a huge amount, but with Rod sulking over his missing powers, it's Spud who shows up. While Braggs is beating up Spud, Charlene drags Sabrina inside to score some weed. At the same time, the Tower Boys show up to kill Crazy. With Spud gone for a long time, a worried Rod gets his powers back and shows as well to check up on his friend. And you know who else shows up? Andre. Yeah, he chose the same time to break into the safe. While the Tower Boys take on Crazy's gang, he is nowhere to be seen. Andre, Charlene, Sabrina, Taser, Rod and Spud all end up in a safe room and are surprised to see each other at the end of Supercell Episode 4. Episode 5 of Supercell begins with everyone running away from Crazy's trap house after seeing each other's powers. The facility watches them and are worried as four of their targets have been in contact. They decide to follow Rod in hopes that he will reunite them. Meanwhile, Tina is in pain and the nurses take forever to come. After they do, Michael is kicked out. That's not suspicious at all. Once he wakes up, he gets a worried voicemail from Dion. He apologizes and promises to tell her everything. As for Spud, he's admitted to the hospital and Rod is worried as he may never wake up. He runs into Sabrina and begs her to take care of Spud. He then visits his mum who is a white woman. 
We learn that her second husband, Greg, is a racist. He only took in Rod's little sister, Rachel, and made Rod live in a hostel since he was 16. He asks to stay with them until Spud wakes up, but she refuses as Greg won't like it. Next, we see Sabrina finally getting promoted to senior nurse as her superiors claim her hard work hasn't gone unnoticed. Meanwhile, Crazy breaks Grandma Amasan's arm in retaliation, which makes Taser furious. Crazy then hooks up with Charlene before heading out with some girls. Feeling foolish, she calls him out but he chokes her and takes back the watch he gifted her. She angrily calls Sabrina that she is going after Crazy as she takes a kitchen knife and follows him out. Elsewhere, Dion finally convinces Jasmine Johnson's parents to help as she tells him about Michael having similar powers. We learn that Jasmine healed her dad's sickle cell disease after which some men took her away. Shocked, Dion tries to tell Mike who gets upset as she keeps investigating on her own. At that moment, Rod arrives and is ready to take him to the other superheroes. Dion overhears and is upset that Mike lied about giving up his search. He simply promises to tell her everything and leaves, which the facility watches via the elevator CCTV. Elsewhere, the Tower Boys spot Veronica, the one who had the Sixers ambush them at the beginning of the show. She's cocky that they won't do anything to her as she is a Sixer. She's proven wrong though as Taser takes out his anger on her and beats her up before the Tower Boys drag him away. Instead, they decide to take out Crazy's mum's house as he checks on her every day. The boys make a pact not to hurt her but to wait for Crazy to show up. However, she spots them and calls the cops. Taser hides the guns in the car by going invisible, but the boys are arrested as the cops find some coke. Meanwhile, Andre locks himself in his apartment and is deeply asleep, which has AJ thinking that his dad is ignoring him. Rod and Mike catch John, but they are unable to get Andre on the phone either. Finally, they convince John to go check on Andre, who wakes up and lets them in. They open the safe and see it's empty, which has Andre disheartened. With nothing to lose, Andre agrees to meet Mike. While Rod and Mike wait, the former reveals why he is helping. He wants Mike to go back in time and save Spud. Michael also comes clean on how he is doing everything to save Dion. The facility continues to watch them though while their agents wait nearby. Before the meeting can take place, the agents, aka the hood guys, show up and knock Andre out. Elsewhere, Mr. Johnson calls Dion as he knows where the facility is. He will tell her, but in exchange, she needs to rescue Jasmine. Back to the superheroes though, Mike and Rod get worried as John tells them that Andre left hours ago to meet them. They head to Sabrina's who cannot find Charlene and we see that her phone is abandoned. They figure that the hooded guys must be after them and decide to look for Taser who goes back to his turf. The hooded guys jump him though and it seems they can see him even when he is invisible. He fights back but before a second hooded guy can attack, Sabrina, Mike and Rod show up at the end of episode 5 of Supercell. Episode 6 of Supercell begins with Mike freezing the hooded guys. However, Taser uses a chance to stab one of them and they unfreeze. This reminds us of a certain Star-Lord who just couldn't wait till the Infinity Gauntlet was off the bad guy. Anyway, to stop Taser, Mike teleports him away as he doesn't want any bloodshed. Sabrina and Rod are outnumbered with the latter being hit by a fireball. Mike returns just in time and teleports everyone to Sabrina's place. They are worried for a burnt Rob, but he instantly heals. Ray, the one who runs the facility, watches the attack via the hooded guys' body cams. We then see him ordering Jasmine to heal Andre and offer him a job. Ray will let Andre see AJ as long as he works as one of his agents, aka the hooded guys. Ray explains that Supercell is a mutation of the sickle cell and his facility hopes to help the patients with Supercell control their powers. Andre is to work with the other agents to bring in all these infected people, dead or alive. Meanwhile, Mr. Johnson shares the last call he had with Jasmine to Dion. We hear Jasmine crying for help as the facility is hurting her. It turns out Johnson had put a tracker on her which led him to Ashington Estate. However, the facility forced him to leave by threatening Jasmine. He hopes to get Michael to teleport and save Jasmine. Dion agrees to pass on the message but she cannot get hold of Mike. Worried that he's been kidnapped, she looks up Ashington Estate and heads to the site. At Sabrina's, Taser is at odds with everyone, as he only cares about taking revenge on Crazy, who calls him to A-Town that evening. Confident that Crazy kidnapped Charlene, Sabrina tries to find A-Town's location. Rod tells her that A-Town is Ashington Estate and they head there. Meanwhile, Mike finally calls Dion, who is being harassed by Braggs and the rest of Crazy's crew in A-Town. Mike instantly teleports to her location while the dealers leave. Guess the final showdown is about to happen in A-Town, huh? Well, they have a tearful reunion and Mike tells Dion about her death. At that moment, Sabrina and Rod also show up, looking for Charlene. The four of them get into Dion's car and head deeper into A-Town, which is a dump, full of junkies, dealers and homeless people. 
they notice a young boy dealing and it turns out to be none other than AJ. Crazy finally arrives and Sabrina tries to torture him into revealing Charlene's location. He taunts her by sharing that the facility took the wrong sister as they believe Charlene is the one with the powers. They are interrupted by an invisible taser who plans to kill Crazy. Meanwhile, Dion notices the agents arriving via a portal as she waits in the car. She tries to warn them, but it is too late. The agents attack, led by none other than Crazy. Yep, it turns out he has powers too. He can actually steal other people's powers. Our guys don't back down and in the melee, the agents lose their masks and we see that Andre is one of them. However, he isn't fully on board as he doesn't agree with Crazy's violent tactics. Mike recognizes Andre and tries to convince him that they are the good guys. At that moment, Crazy chokes Taser and is about to kill him when Andre stops him. Sabrina takes down the other agents and is now our guys versus Crazy. Cornered, Crazy tries to strike a deal and he needs to take them to the facility. And since they want to go to the facility to save Charlene, they can all head there together. Rod falls for it as he reaches out to take the portal clicker from Crazy. Once he's close enough, Crazy slits his throat with a hidden knife and steals his power. With the super speed, he stabs everyone. Rod, Andre, Taser, and Sabrina die instantly while Michael slowly bleeds. Crazy makes his way to Dion and Michael screams for her. He suddenly rewinds to Crazy striking the deal. Before Rod can get close, Mike stabs Crazy, much to everyone's surprise. While the superheroes are distracted, an injured Crazy shoots in Mike's direction. Rod pushes him away in time, which means the bullet travels farther and hits Dion who is waiting behind the group. Michael loses his powers and runs to Dion, who bleeds to death. A couple of days later, Michael finally gets his powers back, but it is too late for him to go back in time and save Dion. As vengeance, he tells the rest that he will go into the future and learn how to take down the facility. In the epilogue of Supercell, we see Charlene being held captive. The facility fixes up Crazy only to kill him since he failed in its mission. We learn that it was Ray who took Crazy out of prison and let him play the drug lord in South London. As Ray heads out, Victoria from Health and Unity, the sickle cell treatment center, shows up. She is disappointed in Ray and says it will be doing things her way from now on. And that is where Supercell comes to an end. Thanks for watching and do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Smash a like or subscribe to the channel, your support is very much appreciated. I'm Greg Wheeler and from all of us over here at The Review Geek, we'll see you on the next video.